Welcome back to High Stakes. Today, we will be discussing the following NFL matches that are happening on Thursday, August 10, 2023. We will be providing our team, total and prop picks for the day. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. If you want access to our premium picks, you can check out our Patreon page. You can find the link to our Patreon page in the description and comments section below. Houston Texans vs New England Patriots The Texans hand over the reins of the team to their fifth head coach in the least four seasons as former Pro Bowl linebacker D'Amico Ryans gets his first crack to lead a team in the NFL from the sidelines. He'll be learning alongside his new quarterback as well, second overall pick CJ Stroud, who all eyes will be on as he makes his NFL debut. The arsenal of weapons at his disposal will be weak, with Nico Collins, 37 catches, 481 yards, 2 TDs in 2022, standing as the top receiving target. Last season the Houston offense averaged 196.7 yards passing and their 283.5 total yards per game was second lowest overall. The line took a hit this week when starting right tackle Titus Howard went down with a hand injury that could cause him to miss a good deal of time, according to reports. Stroud isn't the only rookie to keep an eye on. On the defensive end, Will Anderson Jr., picked third overall, is a sax machine off the edge and should be worth keeping an eye on, especially if you are the opposition and hope to protect your QB. Houston had only 39 sacks a year ago, so this was an area they definitely wanted to address in the offseason, even adding the likes of veteran Chase Winovich to bring depth to the group. Overall, the defense will have a good mixture of young talent and veteran leadership and could turn into a strong point for the team this season if they can come together early. The Patriots' offense is now being handled by former Texans head coach Bill O'Brien, which is a boost for a team whose coaching staff was out of order last season. The person who suffered the most was probably Mac Jones, who took a bit of a step back in his second season. Now, he has an actual offensive-minded coach to guide him and hopefully more stability in the offense. The Pats seem to have whiffed on a few potential targets to his arsenal in the offseason, but New England's receiving core is solid, if not deep, at least. Both teams had their issues last season and the hope that they can improve in 2023 is a work in progress. Houston has a lot of youth on both sides of the ball as they added what they hope will be anchors for the franchise. New England does have the experience factor with Belichick as their head coach but they have to find ways to improve the offense. We know that the Patriots have some talent at skill positions but it remains to be seen how things will click on that side of the ball with O'Brien back to take over the play calling. As it stands, you have to give the edge to the team with some proven experience in this one. Take the Patriots at home as they earn a win. Our team pick is New England plus 1.5 points. New England has struggled since Tom Brady left to go to Tampa Bay, going 25-25 over the last three years with one playoff appearance that ended with a blowout loss in the wildcard round to Buffalo in 2021. The Patriots were 8-9 last year and crumbled down the stretch to wind up outside the playoff picture. New England brought back Bill O'Brien as offensive coordinator and hoped that he can get things clicking on that side of the ball as the team was just 17th in scoring offense, 21.4 ppg, a season ago. Even finishing in the middle of the pack in scoring, the Patriots were just 26th in total offense, 314.6 ypg, and 24th in rushing offense, 106.6 ypg, in 2022. Offensive line was a major issue for the team last season but they didn't make any major efforts to fix that in the offseason, leaving one to wonder if that will crop up again. Mac Jones, 288 of 442, 2,997 yards, 14 TD, 11 INT, is still the number one QB on the depth chart for the Patriots despite his regression in year two. He likely will spend most of the preseason wearing a hat or a visor, standing on the sidelines. That means we're going to see a fair amount of Bailey Zapp, 65 of 92, 781 yards, 5 TD, 3 INT, with the first-team offense, such as it is, in the preseason. He'll battle Trace McSorley, 
45 of 83, 412 yards, 5 INT, for the number 2 spot on the depth chart more than likely they'll watch out for rookie Malik Cunningham, who was a dual threat at Louisville. Ty Montgomery, Pierre Strong Jr. and Kevin Harris will battle to determine who will be the number 2 back behind Ramondra Stevenson now that Damian Harris is gone. Tyquan Thornton, who was a second-round pick last season, will get a chance to make an impact along with Trey Nixon in the passing game. Rookies Kayshawn Bout and Demario Douglas will also try to shine in a less-than-intimidating receiver core for the Patriots. Defensively, the additions of cornerback Christian Gonzalez, safety Marte Mapu and defensive end Keon White should bolster the depth on that side of the ball. With it being just the first of three postseason games, we can expect that the first-teamers will be extremely limited to either a series or two, or maybe a quarter or two. After that, things can get a little crazy as it is truly the only opportunity for some players to prove themselves. New England has scored at least 21 points in each of the last eight preseason openers, so we know Belichick isn't afraid to get the offense in motion right away. Both teams have some solid backup QBs as well, with Houston picking up Case Keenum in the offseason and Zapp slinging it as Jones' backup in New England. The Houston offense is young and may take a bit to gel. The Patriots' defense also has some holes that could be manipulated early. Take the over 38.5 points. Minnesota Vikings vs. Seattle Seahawks it wasn't exactly the ideal offseason for Minnesota in terms of retaining talent, but with Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson still in town, the Vikings have high hopes of repeating as division champions in a very winnable NFC North. In case you haven't heard, Aaron Rodgers isn't in Green Bay anymore, which means Minnesota will be licking its chops to replicate last year's 13-4 regular season record. Last offseason, the Seahawks decided to shop Russell Wilson to Denver and head coach Pete Carroll left most people scratching their heads by putting his trust in 32-year-old Geno Smith to quarterback the team, despite the fact that Smith hadn't been a QB1 in the NFL since 2014. Smith responded by turning in a career year, earning NFL Comeback Player of the Year honors after throwing for 4,282 yards and 30 passing touchdowns. He led Seattle to a surprising 9-8 record and a playoff berth before losing to the San Francisco 49ers in the wild card round. Smith will be back under center in Seattle in 2023, but there's a high probability he won't see the field much on Thursday. Drew Locke returns as Smith's backup, and Holton Ehlers was drafted out of East Carolina to provide some added depth at the quarterback position. Locke didn't see any action in the 2022 regular season as Smith's backup, but he has 24 career starts under his belt with the Broncos, while Carroll is just 1-5 in his last two preseasons, the Seahawks should have the edge on Thursday night with more roster depth than the Vikings. Minnesota's defense, which struggled for large stretches of 2022, will be spending the preseason trying to develop continuity with new DC Flores schemes. They will have difficulty facing Seahawks veteran backup quarterback Drew Locke on Thursday night. Locke does not have the luxury of competing for the starting job this season but he is certainly a more established backup than the Vikings Nick Mullins and rookie Jaron Hall. I don't expect any of the offensive starters from either team to see many if any reps in this game so I'm going to lean toward the Seahawks, a team that will be playing with far more continuity this preseason than the Vikings. Vikings head coach O'Connell proved last season, in his first preseason as head coach, that he doesn't feel any pressure to win preseason games after his team went 0-3 in 2022. The line moved up two points in the Seahawks' favor this week which likely factors in Locke's advantage at the quarterback position in this game. Take Seattle minus 4.5 points. The Minnesota Vikings finished tied with the second-best record in the NFC last year at 13-4 but looks can be a bit deceiving. Despite winning 13 games, the Vikings finished with a negative point differential thanks to a number of single-digit wins coupled with blowout losses. The Vikings were bounced out of the playoffs in the first round and the team made several changes this offseason. Former Miami head coach Brian Flores comes in as the team's new defensive coordinator, hoping to bring a more aggressive, physical style to a defense that struggled at times last year. 
The Vikings also released two stalwarts on the team's offense, wide receiver Adam Thielen and running back Dalvin Cook. Justin Jefferson, arguably the NFL's best wide receiver, should help ease the transition without Thielen while Alexander Madison has had frequent in-game reps behind the injury-prone Cook over the last couple of seasons. Quarterback Kirk Cousins is heading into the final year of his contract and, at 34, is heading into a critical season. Position battles will be at the forefront of the Vikings' preseason opener. While Alexander Madison will take over feature back duties for the Vikings this season, the position as his primary backup is up for grabs. Ty Chandler, Keen Wangwu and Dwayne McBride should all get equal opportunity to earn the job this preseason. Another key position that will be evaluated will be at cornerback. Byron Murphy Jr. and Akaleb Evans are listed as the starters currently but that could change during camp. For me, we'll gauge it, as far as through the joint practices and things, but I definitely want to see some guys play, as far as younger guys that are off to great starts in training camp, and that's across the board in that room and then just understanding how we can be smart and knowing part of the thing when you challenge your team to practice the way are and have two joint practices, we've got to be smart with our group, but we'll determine all of that, situation by situation and get with. Flo, and, Hat, Daniels and see what we need to see from the standpoint of allowing these guys to have a complete case for not only making the team but guys we're looking forward to define roles. I like the under in this matchup. Both teams made some necessary additions to their defenses in the offseason. Minnesota's defense ranked 31st last season in yards allowed, so there really isn't anywhere for them to go except up, especially with a new defensive coordinator who has had success at the highest ranks of the NFL. Seattle's defense in 2022 certainly wasn't the best it's ever been under Pete Carroll, but Bobby Wagner is back now, along with other additions and no key losses. Traditionally, it's not easy to score on the Seahawks in front of the raucous crowds inside Lumen Field. The Vikings will have a lot of inexperienced players on the field on Thursday, and with Geno Smith likely on the sidelines for a large majority of this game, if not all of it, Seattle's offense won't be nearly as high-powered as it will be during the regular season. Give me the under 34.5 points.